Good evening, everybody. We are back with OG Accountability, sitting down once again with uh, Rennie Allen. Uh, thank you for coming all the way out to uh, lovely Huffman. Uh, you just commented coming out. You're like, hey, it's daylight now. I can kind of see where I'm at. I see you had some road work done. <laughs> People put some rock out. Yeah, yeah. You know, every time it rains, we have to maintain the road constantly. Yeah. And uh, you know, sometimes... Well, it, you're off the grid. We're off the grid, man. Right. We collect rainwater. We bathe in it. We drink it. Okay. You, know. you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes you got to be self-sufficient. For sure. For well, sure. man, it's great to have you here. And, and uh, we were talking uh, earlier this week, just kind of hitting on a topic. And, and tonight we're going to talk about speed bumps in life, uh, things that slow us down. And uh, I, I think one of the great things about speed bumps, and I know this is a cheesy metaphorical, you know, to some people, but speed bumps don't mean stop. It just means slow down. And yeah. And I think a lot of times people hit speed bumps and they quit. Yeah, it takes their chassis out. Yeah, absolutely. From underneath them, right? Yeah, and the, well, especially the car you used to drive when I knew you. When I was, man, that thing sat low to the ground, very low to the ground. But and that's why it's no longer here. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what I thought was cool in my teens and twenties yeah. is is no longer. I used to have one of the boom, boom, yeah. boom stereos, and so did I. You, oh, you yeah, that time. yeah, you did. And my brother used to tell me, because he was like the installer for Huffman, he's like, mm. be careful where you go, because yeah. uh, you're a billboard. Yeah. Like, that, guess what I have in my car? A billboard? No, that boom, boom for <laughs> thieves. Oh, yeah, he got me. He button hooked me. Um, my truck got stolen um, when I was dating my wife, my, my now wife, and um, from her apartment complex, and I would have that st- that stereo system booming and to that point yeah they came in they're like thank you thank you and so yeah i learned a lesson there in sure. life full of lessons it definitely definitely is well, i do want to say thank you for having me again um you're quite oh if i was a fly on the wall well <laughs> here we go got him i was just I'm sure something something's gonna come out and take me out. <laughs> You're at a Kier's household, bro. <laughs> right, and so uh, I do appreciate that you are definitely a man of courage uh, to have me back on your program. You took a lot of fasting. Yeah, <laughs> I, I bet it did. So it's it's one of two things: either you're fatalistic, or uh, I'm I'm free. So. Or cheap, as they say. So it's going to be one of those two things. Yeah. Cheap <laughs> is the new availability, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm not just cheap. I'm available. Right. Well, well love, love having great, you, man. Great podcast. Uh, from what I see of it, you're doing a great job. Well, Just thank you. Say that thank you. On the front end, um, I want to schmooze you a little bit because I'm really going to come down pretty hard on you in a minute here. So. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's how you build them up. You build them up to you know to take the legs exactly, out. Exactly. 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 So great subject today. Um, I was telling telling you how I'm not. Uh, some of these guys will come in here and they'll talk off the top of their head. I could do that on some things, but I'm a teacher by nature. And, and so I, when you approached me again, um, I kind of had some things in my spirit that I, I felt like the Lord um, gave me for this moment. So uh, hopefully it'll, it'll meet your expectations. But uh, this is something that's near and dear to my heart. And, and uh, you know, how I just think about how life is such a vapor. Yeah. You know, and I think we say that and we don't realize what that really means. Right. Even, you know, we, we say, oh, even if you live 80 to 90 years, that's still vapor. And it's true. It is. But sometimes it's even sooner than that. And that we must always be ready uh, at every moment. Everybody talks about trib, the trib, you know, pre, post, mid, you got all kinds of tribs, no trib, <laughs> Extra trip, double trip. Yeah, well, it, <laughs> your your trip could be tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. So, so all of that doesn't really uh, make a difference. Um, we we've got to be ready in the moment uh, for the Lord. So, um, I did take a, a few notes, and and I don't know if you want to start off. No, take the liberty, man. So, what was put on my heart, David, um, is this scripture when you called me. And it's a familiar verse, but Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 uh, says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. And I thought about how you talked about speed bumps in our life and how often that can, you know, knock us off path or, or even derail us, if you will, or stop us or keep us from moving forward. Uh, like the potholes out here, right? We can we could allow those things to, to take us uh, off the trail, off the path and what God has for us. But I love this verse because it's it's so powerful that in those moments in life, which we will all experience, uh, God says to trust in him with all of our heart, our, you know, not just a portion of it, but completely trust in him. And then also to lean on him. And, and I think that those are easily read and hard and not as easily done. You know, how do, how do I trust him with my whole heart, all of it? Um, we're not good at that. No. Uh, no. Yeah, not at all. And then to say to lean on, not, not to lean on our own understanding, especially as men, we, we want to figure this thing out. We want to fix things. We, you know, I, I see that all the time, how, um, I'll, I deal a lot with younger younger men, like in the twenties and early twenties and stuff like that. And you and you start to even at work, you start to mentor these these young men, and you just see how uh, there there's so many things missing in their lives, uh, fathers and different things of that nature. And so uh, they're they're just kind of wayward at times, and and how they, um, but still within them, they have a seed, if you will, of that male side of them that says I, I'm going to fix this uh, your wife or your girlfriend or whatever they want you to listen I'm going to fix this get to the point where's this where are we going with this conversation I, I need to fix this yeah right and, and so we get in trouble a little bit from that that kind of stuff because we don't want, want to listen we don't want to say well how can we fix it you know the tire's flat I'm going to I'm going to figure out how to fix it and so it's very difficult and how would you know unless you had a teacher yeah right an example and so mm -hmm. uh, our wives are great teachers. Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, they help us grow. And if they're a good woman, right, a good golly woman. But, um, but we want to lean on our own understanding. So in a crisis situation, what do we want to do? We want to figure it out. We want to fix it ourselves. And uh, then we, we do the old... Uh, quick prayer, Lord, help me, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, our heart's not in it, our mind's not really in it, because we've already got a plan, and we're not really interested in his plan. And a lot of times it's, you know, I, I, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were going through, all right, let's pray, and let's pray this, 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 and they named all the things to pray. And I said, well, <laughs> well why do we need to pray? You got the plan. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's really good. You already have the answer. Yeah, you got the answer. So why are we seeking the Lord, right? And so um, most people couldn't handle what you just said just now. Yeah, most people they would say, "Well, he does, he's not a man of God. He's not spiritual. He doesn't care about people." But yeah, we do that a lot of times. We come with the answer. Yeah. Well, along that line, uh, David, I think that at times we need a little tough love in the kingdom. We do. Um, and so at times we need to say, I. I don't know if I shared this last time I was here, and, and it's kind of off the pat, um, the subject, but I think it's important. I think I might have brought it up uh, <clears throat> here once. Does God love me more than he loves his work? Yes, yes, you did. Yeah, and I, and I used that at different places. I was in Baptist Church uh, a few week, few weeks ago, and I shared that with them, and I could see the shock on their face and the People were like, oh, well, and they got a little ruffled by that. And I let, I let the Holy Spirit do its work. And you could see slowly but surely, God's not going to violate who he is. So even in a, in a crisis, even in, he's not going to change who, is it, who he is, his, na his nature, just to meet your need. Um, so we have to get ourselves in alignment with him if we want to get ourselves through these uh, speed bumps, if you will, uh, in life. But... Um, so in all your ways, uh, acknowledge him. Okay, so that means in everything I'm doing, in all my plans, I'm going to acknowledge him, and he's going to make this the straight. Uh, he's going to make our path straight, not us. We're, in other words, he's going to smooth this out if we just trust in him. Now that doesn't mean we don't do anything. 
obviously. Absolutely. I think um, sometimes think yeah. people think God's just going to come and do it all for me. Right. Well, no, he's going to use your hands to do it. You're going to yeah. have to get up and you're going to have to change the tire. You're going to have to get through your mess. Exactly. And, and you're going to have to do that while leaning on him. Right. Whether in success and failure, uh, no matter what you're going through, if, if you are expecting God to intervene, he will right. through your action. Yeah. So it is the, uh, to your point there, it's, it's leaning on him, uh, but it's also while I'm doing, I'm doing something, but trusting in him. And people say, well, what's the difference? Well, I can, I can do and not trust in him. The, the easy part's the doing. It's the trusting part that we struggle with, right? Because, mm-hmm. again, back to control. We've got this thing figured out. And it's not going according to our plan. You know, the poet Robert Burns wrote to a, to a mouse. He wrote a po- poem to a mouse. I don't know if you're familiar with this. No, no, I'm not. And so uh, you've, you're familiar with this, this uh, saying. It says, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. <laughs> yeah. Are you familiar oh, with Oh, I am familiar with Very that. Very familiar with Yes. It. So he writes this, Robert Burns writes this poem. Uh, and, he, and in there he says, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. Well, he was working in the field at his farm, and uh, and he disturbed the nest of a, a mouse, and and he felt really terrible about it. So he writes this poem as almost an apology to this mouse. <laughs> I'm right? sorry, Mr. Mouse. I'm sorry, Mr. Mouse. <laughs> and so you know, um, he he uh, disturbed this mouse's uh, winter home. And he felt horrible about it because now that's the place where this mouse is going to survive and, and you know, and all this kind of stuff is going to nest there and whatever. And this mouse really worked hard and kind of set, set its nest up and everything and, and all this. And he comes along and, you know, accidentally just, just destroys it. So now this mouse is left dealing with this crisis in its life, and he felt really horrible about that. And that's good, Rennie. Sometimes we accidentally do things and destroy things. But it doesn't mean you didn't destroy it, even if it was by accident. You still did it. It's still broken. It's still broken. For sure. So it, it's the proverbial expression uh, that's used to signify the futility of making detailed plans when the ability to fully or even partially execute them is uncertain. It's futile. So we make these detailed plans and often uh, the the fulfillment of that or the completion of that is uncertain. Yeah. Okay. And so, so Burns is writing here and saying, "Look, I know, Mister Mouse, you worked really hard. You did all this stuff. To your point, David, I didn't mean to, but life happens. Yeah, yeah things it does. happen." And so this mouse had all these plans, and something out of its control came along and changed all that. And so uh, I think that's what we do a lot of times too, right? We just we we try to figure it out. We get a plan, and then things don't go the way we expected them to. Boy, that is when you think about where you're at in life and things happen. I always go back to that scripture. It's going to rain on the just. And the unjust, you're going to have things. Life happens, yeah. And and it's it's those speed bumps. If you a don't have a plan, and you haven't gone through the the process of putting a plan together, right? I mean, think about when we're in school. We have fire drills. I remember when they used to make us get get under our desk, or they'd take us out in the hallway and we'd put our books over our head in the hallway. Like, what is this going to do if yeah. a five thousand be- pound beam comes crashing down on me? But life happens. Yeah. And a lot of times when life happens, we completely throw the plan out the window because it wasn't what we expected. Yeah. Yeah. Our expectations. Uh, I think another good scripture along that line would be James four thirteen through 15. So it's come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such city and spend a year there engage in business and make a profit 
Okay. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. And that's a, that's a shift in a believer's life. You know, uh, how do you tell a mature Christian? Okay, they've been through some things and they're still around. That's a big deal, right? You're still here. You're still in the fight. You're still you're trying. And so also I've, I've learned to go, okay, God, I know this is what I want to do. But what is your what is your will? And as cliche as that sounds, I don't think people I think people say that, David, and they don't really mean it. Right? And getting getting to the place mm. where we stop saying things in our prayers and start believing what we're saying is is transformation, change in our life. And so we, we run around and we say all these things, but we do we we know in our heart we don't agree with what we've even just said often. It's a double double mindedness, right? No. We we keep we keep that. Uh, I think as as believers, we kind of sometimes keep those uh, little scriptures on the back burner to help us when we're not really doing what we're supposed to be doing. Justify. Yeah, we well, we're really good at justifying. I mean, that's human nature. Yeah, for for sure. I, I never do it though. Not me. I know I, people that I have, have heard of. It's. These. I read about it. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, I, I think about that and I, I, I think about the saying that we've all heard before, uh, to prepare for the unexpected. We, we hear things like that, right? Well, by definition, it, it would not then be unexpected, <laughs> right? You can't plan for everything. You can't plan for, right. So, so it's not that we don't plan, as you were saying earlier, we have to plan. But we have to remember that God is sovereign over our plan. And that we can lay it out, as you were saying earlier, we can lay it out. And I think that God wants us to be involved in, in you know, uh, and we'll read a scripture in a second where I, I, I believe this um, supports what I'm about to say. God wants us to be involved in the planning and all that, but also remembering that He is sovereign. And it comes back to that question I ask the churches a lot of times is, is God love you more than he loves his, his word, right? It's like all I'm saying to him is put yourself in right perspective, okay? And I think the problem is what we have in, in our life, David, is when we have speed bumps in our life, we, we've got ourselves out of perspective and, and, and out of alignment. And so, so we struggle. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just I'm thinking about things in my life. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Well, that'd be the first time. Yeah, well, but, there's uh, a first for everything. <laughs> time and chance. Time and chance happen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let me let me David read this in Luke. Uh, for he, Jesus, for which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. So I, I do believe that he wants us involved and planning and 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 looking to the future and all that. But again, back to God, you're. God, this is my plan, but you're sovereign. You are over my plan. You can change my plan anytime you want to. That's a difficult place to be. That is a hard place to be because we all want to say that. Mm -hmm. I'll do whatever God tells me to do. What? Careful, because he may. Careful. He may. So don't don't set a snare for a trap for yourself don't let your mouth say something that you can't follow through with have you ever and i'm sure you have uh, all the time <laughs> said, not prayed something stop praying because you know god answers <laughs> <laughs> were you were you here earlier today no <laughs> oh god uh i'll share it with you off okay. camera but i'm like were you here at 5 15 this morning that's funny. That's funny. But yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, Lord, I'll never. Okay, I'm not going to use those words. You know, oh, I'll, I'll never. I'll do that. Yeah, no, no. Not, I, I'm out of the promise business. I'm, I'm. You know what I'm out of? The dealing business. I don't make deals with God anymore. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's someone that has not grown in the Lord. Right? There's this the lack of maturity, you know, spiritual maturity in them when they continually try to make deals. With, yeah. with God, right? 
Um, so you should really just trying to manipulate them and get your way. And so, and, and the hilarity of it all is he knows that immediately. He knew it a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He's like, Hey guys, watch this. He's about to, <laughs> this is good. <laughs> We've seen this one before. Oh man. Right. The, and yeah. So, so then that's, that's us still trying to be in control of our crisis in our situation. Again, we're trying to micromanage God for sure. We do a lot of that. A lot. A lot of that. We, I probably shouldn't say this, but a lot of our church services are manipulation services. Oh. Mm. 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 In closing. In closing. Uh, here, I'm going to pass the offering plate. Oh. That is true, though. Randy, that is that is so true. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we've talked a little, maybe on camera and off camera, um, but we grew up in a lot of, in, in, in well, I did, and, and you yeah. were involved with, in a, a great organization, but a lot of it was manipulation on the emotional aspect of human beings. Mm-hmm. Very, very, you know, manipulative um, on how to get a response, not to God, yeah. not to the word, to the speaker. Yes. Because I think you and I are a lot alike. I'm going to give people respect. But if I'm not digging what you're saying, a it's not for me. But I'm not gonna. I'm not running around. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> hooting and hollering for you, bro. I'm not. And and somebody and even, else may. Even if it is good, okay, it's gonna, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're very similar in that way. We're kindred spirits there. I'm, I'm just not. I'm just not giving it up. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I was thinking, uh, David, on earlier today um, about life's interruptions. Right. And, and life is going to have them. We're going to have interruptions. We're going to have a plan and we're going to have a flow. Life is a flow. It has progression to it. Uh, and so we expect certain things to happen, as we well know. Uh, you get you know, engaged and married and you have kids and you grow old and, you know, the cycle. Right. And all that kind of stuff. And we have expectations of these things and there's a flow to it. And when and, and the progression of it, and when that gets interrupted and things move around, that's a very hard thing to deal with. And uh, it's easy uh, to be an unbeliever because they don't have to search themselves. They just react to the flesh all the time. Right? We, on the other hand, have been transformed and have to stop ourselves and uh, and look introspectively, like check our check our spirit and our, our motives and everything else. And there's so much more that goes on when you are a child of, of, of God is you have to check yourself so much of the time. Why am I really saying this? Why am I really doing this? And and if you're not doing that continuously, you will struggle in 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 the interruptions, right? Because it's like, okay, this is not working to plan. Back to well, God's not sovereign over my plan. And so now I'm going to be frustrated and angry and bitter. And, and then that's how people get mad at God because it didn't go their way. And they blame God for, for this and that and the other thing. My, my plan didn't work out, so it must be God's fault. Yeah. And God's like, whoa, hey. And you know several people as well as I do that do not serve God anymore because they had an interruption in the flow of their plan and, and the progress. It was, so, so we move from one event to the next in our lives and and uh and then we have these expectations for each one of those events that we have and we we do a lot of compartmentalizing and working and planning we're i see chess up here chess pieces up here. i'm a chess player bro this, this and most christians are we're just we're moving pieces around right and we're sacrificing pawns <laughs> exactly <laughs> right we sacrifice little things and hold on to what we think is important for sure man i felt that hmm did you feel that? You want me to play? You need some <laughs> background music? <laughs> but it, uh, it's so true. Yeah. I mean, we... we oh, I can... I, yeah, uh, that's, what's uh, that? What's this? What's my integrity? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. What's my... Come right. on. So, come on. You're taking a page out of my book. <laughs> you know, there's there's things we run to. You know, what's that song? We've all run to things we know aren't right. Mm. All of us. Yeah. And in doing so, you really are sacrificing little pieces of your integrity. Yeah. And if you want your integrity back, you got to go where you sacrificed it. You got to go back. It's good stuff. You got to go back and get it. Wow. And and that's 
most of us avoid that because we don't want accountability. Right. We just, well, whatever, what's that? And we just keep going. Yeah. I, I, I said something the other day uh, to some folks, and I love how we as Christians um, see God's blessings and everything sometimes. <laughs> So I was telling It's I said, a sign. Yeah. So I told him uh, uh, to this church I was preaching, I said, you walk out and you realize the girl at the, the counter gave you an extra 20 and you're out in the parking lot. And most Christians nowadays say, oh, thank you, Lord. I have what been blessed. Blessing. <laughs> she lost her job. Yeah. I've been blessed. Yeah. And, and so I, I challenged them to say, and, and I've done this myself many, many times where because it's easier to just say, I don't want to get back in there and all that kind of stuff. But in that moment, the little bits, the little pieces, you, you say to yourself, you know what, I need to go back in there and just, hey, you gave me too much change. And uh, not that, I mean, maybe that's a small thing and there's great things. We all fail at different things, but sometimes it's those little small things that chip away at us, to, to your point. Yeah. Right. We've sacrificed sacrificed all our pawns. What are we down to now? We can go start getting rid of some bishops. The things that matter. The, I mean, the, the the things that you know. I, we can look at the pawns. Hold as the to, kingdom together, right? The day to day things. But once you once you don't realize what you're giving up, and then you have nothing left to give. Yeah. All you have left to give now are the very important things in life. Yeah. And are you going to jeopardize your integrity for those things? That's good stuff. And if somebody's listening, and you can come back. If you hit a speed bump. Oh, for sure. And most of my speed bumps, I got out and put in the road myself. You built them. I built them myself. Yeah. But it, you you can come back. You, you aren't so far gone that God can't love, accept, forgive, and make you a rook, make you a knight. Yeah. No, we all want to be kings. Mm-hmm. Some of there's us queens. Only, there's only one queen. <laughs> there's only one king. There's only one king, but you know we want to yeah. be. Yeah. And, and we want to be that king. We want to be that king. We don't say it, but we do. We do. And some, like you said, some of us want to be king and queen. That's another sermon. <laughs> That's a mm, that'll preach. <laughs> so I so life's interruptions. We have deviations from our vision. So we had a vision for life, David. And how things should should go, and then you look back and you go, well, maybe you went through a, a tragic divorce or a terrible divorce or whatever. You didn't plan that. That was never in my intentions. That was not in my vision. You know, um, it could be a, a lot of things. We, uh, and I'll I'll share something in just a few minutes uh, of a crisis that was was in my life, and my wife really encouraged me to share that, but. Um, I, would, I do want to make this statement, if I can. Jesus is Lord over our crisis. So we've got a lot of crisis in life, right? But he, understand that he is Lord over that. And as you said, he knows beginning from ending. So there's no surprises to God at all. And, and so if we will bring our crisis to him and honestly lay it at his feet and say, all right, Lord, I'm going to have to trust you in this one. Because it's beyond my capacity, um, I, you know. I mean, there's some things that you know we can handle, we can take care. Of. God doesn't need to, you know, wipe our rear end all the time. You, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? And so, but there's some things we need to go and say, "Hey, Lord, this one's this is beyond me, and I'm going to have to trust in you." And and sometimes we wait way too long in that process. We should start a little bit sooner. But I think about Jesus and how he was he, he heals the demon on one side of the lake, gets in the boat, goes to the other side of the lake. He, his foot's not even on the ground yet. And Jer, Jarius is running up like, I got a crisis. No, here's another crisis. My my daughter's, you know, uh, dying, and she's at home, and she's on the death door, death door. And so Jesus, in the flow of the direction. So he comes out, and he, it, now, now his, he's been, his flow's been changed, if you will. The direction's been changed. So now we got this new crisis. So he's heading in that direction, and what happens? The women... With the issue of blood, she reaches out and touches him, and so he said, he stops immediately. So now that flow has been impeded. Here we go again. We just had this crisis over there, getting a boat, can't get my foot on the ground, got another crisis. What next? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like now I'm walking along, and boom, here's another crisis. And so 
and and then for Jerry, they then the uh, the word comes back. The daughter dies, and 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 uh, Jesus isn't phased, right? We, we, so we know the story. Like he he's, he is life, and um, so he goes from so the, it's from crisis to crisis to crisis, and yet each crisis is turned into a victory. Every single one of those crises, and and so uh, Jesus didn't show up when Jarius won it. Right, he he showed up on time, on time, on time. And Randy, this just popped in my head. God comes to us in love. He said, "If you go to the highest mountain, there my spirit is. If you go to the depths of the hell, my spirit's still there." God's already to us. We have to bring our crisis to Him. That's what everybody did. Yeah, that's a good point. They brought their crisis. Every one of the yeah to Him. Right. To the answer. Yeah. So, so again, we bring our crisis to him, knowing he is Lord of the crisis, and that every crisis he deals with turns into victory. And we got to remember that, that, yes, you're going through a crisis right now in your life. And some of them are real. We're not talking about small. Some people get upset about very silly things, but there are real crises that come in people's lives, real dilemmas. Uh, that in 50 to 100 years, nobody's even going to remember, are they? And so... Some of it's five days. Right. It's not even a big deal anymore. Five minutes. Yeah. People can turn around like that and say, oh, well, look at there. I was worried about nothing. Yeah. Made a mountain out of a molehill. Right. But we don't do that part of it because we just keep... We go on. Yeah. Just keep moving. Yeah. Well, he took care of the crisis. I agree. Let's go find another one. (laughs) Because there's one waiting on me. There's one. Oh, it's there. It's it's there. It's going to be there. So so I, I wrote a little something here. Crisis is the incubator. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, crisis is the incubator of chaos. So here's the definition of crisis. A time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. And the definition of chaos is complete disorder and confusion. So... You can have a crisis without chaos, but most of our crises include chaos with them. Why? Because we don't have a plan. We, we're not, again, we're not ready for the next crisis that comes in. Um, so I, I think about uh, 9-11, and in my industry, um, we deal a lot with um, ICS, Instant in Command System, and how... Uh, 9-11 led to the instant command system being implemented in the country because what happened is we had a crisis, planes hit towers, and then we had chaos. Who, you know, this department can't talk to that department. They got issues, and so I think that, you know, there could have been more people saved, but there was a lot of chaos that was going on in this crisis. As you can well imagine, we've never faced anything like Nothing that. Nothing like that had ever happened before. Yeah, so... so we, we learn from our, <coughs> our crisis, and we come up with ways of mitigating chaos. And that's what I think as believers we should be doing also, is that, yeah, we've been through, we may face some crisis, but we've got an incident command system, right, that we have now formulated and, and have a plan. You can't address everything. But at least at some point when the crisis hits, we don't all go crazy in chaos. We can stay, remain calm because we know in whom we have believed, and he is the Lord of my crisis. And so, so I don't have to, I, chaos doesn't have to reign in my household or my spirit or my life and just realize, yes, I'm going to be, I'm walking through this crisis in my life, and it's real. But I know that on the, when we come out of this, Jesus is Lord of the crisis. And he turns every crisis into a victory. And if we just keep that in our mind as we're going through things, David, then we, we're going to fare better. We're going we're gonna to go through this problem a little bit better. We're going to have the victory on the other end. And it's, it's easy to say, right? But we've all walked through some things. And you can't wait for, <coughs> you can't wait for something to go wrong. We're buck passers. When there is a problem, then we want to delegate. Well, here, you take care of it. You can't do that in the middle of the problem. Yeah. If, you, if you're going to be a delegator, 
before the problem gets there, people need to know their their position, their mm-hmm. place. Right. Uh, you know, I want to use the word calling, but their what what their yeah. purpose is in in, the, mm-hmm. in those scenarios. I'll, I'll take it to this. We had a um, a guy in our shop one day, and uh, he came and he bought some tourniquets from us, and uh, he wanted to order some more. And there was a gentleman there that has used tourniquets in combat. So he looked at him and said, you probably want to buy 10 extra. And he looked at him and he said, why? He said, because you need to practice putting one on. Wow. He said, now, you know, you're not going to get down on it fully.